A few weeks ago, Meta released Llama 2, the successor to their open source Llama language model that helped spawn a hundred others, including Alpaca, Vicuña, and of course Orca. Within a few days of release, I read the fascinating 76 page technical paper, The Usage Guide, each of the many release pages and the full terms and conditions, and I've already run many of my own experiments. So, let's start with the basics. Llama 2 was trained on more data, has more parameters in the biggest model, and the context length has doubled. Meta has also spent what must be tens of millions fine-tuning it for chat, but I'll get into that more later. For now, let's focus on how it compares to the original Llama and other famous open source models. The paper states that Llama 2 was trained on 40% more total tokens than Llama 1, over 2 trillion tokens in total. But what data specifically? They say they used more robust data cleaning and didn't include any data from Meta's products or services. However, they upsampled the most factual sources. Beyond that, the paper simply states, it was trained on a new mix of publicly available data, with absolutely no mention of specific sources. So while we know the quantity of data is greater, Meta has not provided any clarity on the actual content used to train Llama 2. This lack of transparency is disappointing, if not surprising. As AI becomes more powerful, we need to pay more attention to how these models are being trained and whether the data itself introduces any biases. In terms of scale, the largest Llama 2 model has 65 billion parameters, up from 37 billion in the biggest Llama 1. To give some perspective, that's about 2.5x more parameters than GPT-3 and 7x more than Jurassic 1 Jumbo. However, it's still dwarfed by models like Google's Palm with 540 billion parameters. The paper also notes that Llama 2's context length was doubled compared to Llama 1, allowing it to develop more coherence over long conversations. With more data, a larger size and a longer context, Llama 2 certainly seems like an upgrade under the hood. But does that translate to better performance? Let's examine this with an example. So on the challenging MMLU benchmark testing broad knowledge, Llama 2 scored 91% accuracy versus 86% for Llama 1. Nice improvement, but perhaps less than some hoped for given the much larger data and model size. However, Meta deliberately did not compare Llama 2 to models like Palm, GPT-4 or Orca. Those comparisons likely wouldn't look as favorable. In fact, some third-party benchmarks show Orca outscoring Llama 2 in areas like mathematical reasoning despite being smaller. Make no mistake, Llama 2 is extremely capable, but is it really the best in class as Meta claims? The jury may still be out. After pre-training Llama 2 on over 2 trillion tokens of data, Meta didn't stop there. They went on to fine-tune the model extensively for dialogue and chat specifically through reinforcement learning. This involved creating two separate reward models, one optimized for helpfulness and one for safety. Essentially, these reward models act like AI trainers, giving the base Llama 2 model treats or scoldings to shape its behavior. The paper goes into immense detail on this process, but in simple terms, the reward models score each response from Llama 2 during the conversation. Responses that seem helpful and safe get a high score, while low quality or unsafe outputs get a low score. By optimizing the base model to maximize its scores, Meta trains Llama 2 to have more useful benign conversations. It's an ingenious approach, but also computationally expensive. Meta reports using hundreds of thousands of GPU hours for this fine tuning alone. That likely cost millions of dollars even for a company of Meta's size. So while they are releasing the model itself for free, replicating this level of tuning is out of reach for most. Furthermore, according to the paper, there is an inherent trade-off between optimizing for helpfulness versus safety during this reinforcement learning fine-tuning process. As the model gets more safety training, it becomes more cautious and gives more unhelpful responses like I can't recommend that. I saw this firsthand in some of my initial experiments. When I tried asking the model challenging questions from AI benchmarks, it often refused to answer at all. Meta calls this false refusal and admits it can be a problem. There are also examples in the paper that illustrate this trade-off. When asked for good roasts for a comedy competition, the helpfulness reward model happily provides funny but inappropriate responses. Meanwhile, the safety model gives only bland ones. Finding the right balance between the two is a key challenge. There's no doubt Llama 2 performs very well on many NLP tasks. It shows extensive knowledge about a wide range of topics when casually conversing. However, the paper admits it is weaker when it comes to more technical domains like coding, logic and mathematical reasoning compared to other recent models. 
This is likely because Llama 2 was optimized primarily for friendly chat. While it can discuss quantum physics, asking it challenging physics problems reveals the limits. The same is true for math, programming, and other technical skills. Areas where models specifically tuned for those applications may exceed Llama 2. It's also worth noting that Llama 2's abilities are significantly reduced when using languages other than English. This reflects biases in the training data, which was predominantly English text. So while Llama 2 has impressive multilingual capabilities overall, English remains its strong suit for now. This begs the question, why did Meta decide to open source Llama 2 in the first place? In the paper, they justify it by saying the release promotes transparency, democratizes access to AI and creates a more level playing field. But according to Mark Zuckerberg himself, the main reason is that Llama 2 is far from advanced AI. In a recent interview, he said, I think Google's Palm model is, is also, I think, has about 10 times as many parameters now. The Llama models are very efficient, so they perform well for, for something that's around 65 billion parameters. So for me, that was also part of this, because there's a whole debate around, you know, is it good for everyone in the world to have access to the most frontier AI models? And I think as the AI models start approaching something that's like a superhuman intelligence, that's a bigger question. In essence, he argues that since Llama 2 is not close to human level AI, it's acceptable to release it openly. However, some argue that even below that threshold, these models could be misused for harmful applications. The other factor is that many of Meta's top researchers likely demanded they be allowed to publish their work openly. Zuckerberg admitted that was part of the calculus. Otherwise, they risk losing talent to other companies with more open cultures. Meta published an extensive technical paper detailing Llama 2, but what about guidance on using it safely and ethically? Unfortunately, their responsible AI guide is quite underwhelming. Spanning just 24 pages, it consists almost entirely of generic AI safety recommendations and reminders to follow the law. There is little concrete advice tailored specifically to Llama 2's capabilities and limitations. While they attempted some red teaming to probe for harmful use cases, this was limited to English only. The paper notes that the community must carry out additional red team testing and risk analysis for all languages supported by Llama 2. For a company investing so heavily in AI safety research, Meta's guidance around their largest language model released to date leaves much to be desired. Developing helpful applications of Llama 2 safely will fall primarily on external researchers and developers. Meta should also provide more specific guidelines on responsible use of Llama 2, including evaluating potential harms and incorporating safety practices. They have a responsibility to support beneficial outcomes given their reach. And that's all for today. If you're excited about AI innovations and want to stay updated with the latest trends and insights, subscribe and turn on notifications. Remember, AI is not our enemy, but our ally, ushering us into a future of endless possibilities.